And so transversals of parallel lines find angle measures. These two right here are parallel lines, and here's your transversal. So let's say that angle one, let's say it's 120 degrees. So measure of angle one is 120. We're going to find all re the rest of the seven angles that um, are unknown at this time. So um, what do we know? We know corresponding, sorry, corresponding angles. We know adjacent, alternate, interior, alternate, exterior, consecutive, interior, and vertical. Let's use vertical. Okay, so angles two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight, which one is vertical to angle one? Angle four is vertical to angle one. And if angle four and angle one are vertical, then they are congruent. If they are congruent, then angle four is also 120 degrees. Now let's do corresponding. Which angle corresponds to angle one? Angle five. If you have corresponding angles, then you have congruent angles. So if angle one is 120, then angle five is 120. Okay. And then, you could either look at angle four. What's corresponding to angle four? Angle eight. Or angle five and angle eight are vertical. So as soon as you, it starts kind of flowing, you kind of get the gist of what things are. So eight is corresponding to four, which means it's 120, and eight is vertical to five, which means it's 120. And look what we have. We have one, two, three, four angles that are 120 degrees. Okay. Now watch what happens. So now we need two, three, six, and seven. Let's go back to angle one. If I add angle one and angle two together, they make this straight line. And how many degrees are in a straight line? 180. So if we already know that one angle is 120, what would we do to be able to find the other one? We would subtract. And get, oops. <laughs> My bad, I kind of knew what the answer was and I put it there to begin with. Okay, so we take 180 and subtract 120 and we get 60. So angle two is 60. And if angle two is 60, then angle three is 60 because they are vertical. Angle six is 60 because it's corresponding to angle two, and angle seven is 60 because it's vertical to angle six. So now we have one, two, three, four angles that are 60. And what do those two numbers add up to be? 180, every single time. Let's do it one more time before we get into the lesson, okay? So let's say angle four. Let's see. Let's say angle four is 80 degrees. I just picked that out of the air, just 80 degrees. So if angle four is 80, that means that there's going to be 
three other angles that are also 80. The easiest one would be the one that's vertical. So angle three is 80. Then what corresponds to angle four? Angle five. So angle five is congruent to angle four. So angle five is also 80. So we have one more that's 80. Which one is it? Angle six. Because angle six is vertical to angle five. So we have four angles that are 80. So how much are all the other ones going to be? How do we figure it out? We take 180 minus the 80 that we already know, which is 100. So angle one is 100, angle two is 100, angle seven is 100, and angle eight is 100 because they are supplementary. They are supplementary, and what supplementary did 80? 100. So all of the rest of them are 100. Okay. All of your problems are going to be saying this right here. Okay? So you have two parallel lines, and you have a transversal. So that means that all eight angles, four angles are going to be one measure and the other four are going to be the other. So the measure of angle JKN, where is JKN? From J to K to N is 135. What is the measure of JK? JKI from J to K to I. How much is this? If they, if these two angles are adjacent, which means that they're next to, they're not going to be congruent. They are going to be supplementary. So you're going to take 135 and subtract from 180 and get 45. DEH is 130. From D to E to H is 130. How much is I, H, E? From I to H to E. Couple ways that you can think about it. You can think, oh, 130. One thirty is an obtuse angle. This one is an obtuse angle. If they're both obtuse, then they're both going to be the same measure. Okay? But this angle and this angle are also alternate interior angles. And if they're alternate interior, that means that they are congruent, which means that they equal. So angle IHE is 130. IHJ from I to H to J it's not going to mark for me let's take this it has stopped working over here let me refresh this. There we go. Okay. So IHJ is 121. Let's do it this way. Before we even know this right here, 
if this is 121, then this is 121, and this is 121, and this is 121. Because of vertical angles and corresponding parts, or corresponding angles. So, is GHE one of those angles? Yes, it is. So GHE is the same as IHJ, so that is 121. ONL, from O to N to L, is this one. So it's this one, and this one, and this one. MNL is not one of the ones that I just marked. So MNL is not 133. It would be the supplement of 133. So you would subtract and get 47 as your answer. HGE is this right here. So this would be the same, and this one would be the same, and this one would be the same. KJG. KJG is this one. I just marked over what I just said. So those are the same angles. Is that one right here? Yeah, that one. So those two are corresponding angles, which means that they are congruent. G H E. This one, this one, this one, and this one. I H E. From I to H to E is this angle which is not a purple angle. So again, it's the supplement. Hundred and thirteen. P O L is oops. This angle. N O L is this angle. One of those is obviously obtuse, and one of them is acute, so they are not going to be equal. So we are going to do the supplement again. 111. Not bad. Thinking about it again. 121. JKM. I H K. All right. So let me do I H K in a different color. The red are the ones that are congruent to each other, which means the purple is not. So again, the supplement. Sixty-seven. R S V U V S. Okay. These two are consecutive interior. They're on the same side of the transversal, transversal, and they are both interior which means that they add up to be 180. They are supplementary to each other. So 180 minus 116 64. And we won't worry about that.